you're sketching it on shape and you're wondering just what all those buttons do. Let me show you. In this video, we're going to learn about sketching, dimensions and constraints by creating a simple object that has a lot of shapes, a domino. Let's begin. So we've created our new document and we end up with the default screen. We're going to go ahead and start our first sketch. In the previous video, we clicked on a plane and that will work just fine. But I have created another part here just to show you that despite the fact you can click on a plane, it's not the only way to do things. Watch as I hover over the different surfaces, anything flat will come up and we'll be able to sketch on it instead. Anything curved like this will not highlight and therefore we can't draw on it. So we could, if we wanted, draw this sketch on here. We can hit the X to delete that and instead draw it on here. It doesn't matter that the edges are broken or curved. As long as there is a flat surface somewhere, we can use it to sketch on. Now that that demonstration is over, I'm going to delete everything I had done up to that point and we'll start our sketch again. This time we're going to draw on the top plane. We can click it here. We can also click it over on the feature tree. I'm going to spin the camera around. I'm going to use the P shortcut to hide my planes. And the first thing I'm going to do is to use a normal rectangle and draw the outline of our domino. You notice that everything is blue at the moment. That means it is unconstrained. If you're just doing a shape, so you're trying to get it visually correct, then that is perfectly fine. That is enough. But if you're going to be manufacturing, the aim is to get everything black. What does it mean when everything's black? It means it can't be interpreted in more than one way. It means it's not ambiguous. Right now, if I drag one of the corners, we'll see that the proportions can change entirely. We're going to start to fix this by coming up to the dimension tool. I'm going to give a width and a height for our domino. So I'm going to make this one 60 by 30. Okay, so we've set the width and the height and you might be thinking, well, what else can you do? It still hasn't turned black. If we drag this now, we'll see that the problem is, although we've defined the width and height as exact things, overall, the rectangle is not defined. The easiest way to fix this is to drag the corner to origin. Everything now turns black and we know that it's now locked to that spot. Dragging will no longer have any effect. The next thing we're going to do is to split our domino in half. So we're going to draw a line and we're going to use on shapes built in snapping. Once the cursor changes, I head towards the midpoint. There we are. And we have a little logo next to the mouse cursor as well. As it stands, this is going to split our domino into two halves. Really what we want this to be is just a guideline. Onshape has something inbuilt for that. We can click on it and then come up the top and we have a button for construction lines. The Q keyboard key is a shortcut to toggle any line to be a construction. You can do it after it's drawn or before you're drawing. We're now going to draw the circles on the face of our domino. So we'll come up to the circle tool and we're not going to pay too much attention to positioning and size, but we're going to go for three on the top and four down the bottom. At this point, I'm only going to dimension one of them. We can click the toolbar at the top or hit the D key on the keyboard. I'll go for a nice round number of five. You might have noticed all these buttons past the regular tools in Onshape. If you can't see them and your window is too small or maybe your resolution is a little bit lower, you'll notice that they do collapse into this drop down here. So if you can't see them across, hit the little drop down and you'll get to all of them. These are called constraints. These are very important for being efficient and saving time and getting the correct geometry. This is a perfect example here. We want all of our circles to be the exact same size, but it will be very tedious to go through and dimension them all to be five. Also think of the scenario where we want to change them to be six after making it because it didn't look quite right. We have to come back and edit the number for seven in this case. What's much more efficient is to click them one at a time and then come up and use the equals constraint. As soon as I click this, they'll all be locked to the same five. If I update this to four, they all shrink because they're locked to be equal. 
Although we've set the diameter for all of our circles, we have not done anything to constrain the center point, so they remain blue and we can drag them around individually. We're going to try and use constraints to get our geometry how we want it as quickly as possible. We can press L for line and then Q to toggle construction lines and we're going to draw an X across each one. A key constraint that we haven't used yet is the coincident constraint. It ensures two things touch each other and it's the one on the left hand side. If we click on the center of our circle and then the line, it makes sure that they touch. We're going to repeat for all of them. This middle circle we're going to use a slightly different constraint. Because we want it to lie on the exact halfway point of these, we're going to use the midpoint one. We click it, center of the circle and then the line and it locks it into place. We have our first black fully constrained circle. The next step is to get all of our dots aligned. For this we have horizontal and vertical constraints. We click on the center point of the three circles on the left hand side and then click the vertical constraint. They all move into position. We're going to repeat this with the circles on the right hand side. We're now going to do the horizontal circles from left to right. Once again we click on the center point and then the horizontal constraint. Let's do a drag test. That looks pretty good. The reason they still move is because we haven't defined how far we want them from the edge. To do that we're going to draw one last construction line. Then we're going to come up to the dimension tool or press D and give this a measurement. I'm going to choose 6. Okay you'll notice everything has turned black. We have achieved our desired geometry. The next part we're going to do is a little line that is an indented divider between the two halves of the dominoes. So we're going to zoom in and we're going to start with a rectangle, just getting it roughly in position. And then the next thing we're going to do is to use our three point arc tool to round the edges. This first one I'm going to get purposely wrong. I'm going to snap it to the two corners but I'm going to make it really bulging so I can show you the next type of constraint. A really handy one that you use all the time is a tangent constraint. And that means that two round things or something straight and something round come smoothly out of each other. If I click it and then the arc and the line adjacent, see that it smooths it out and does it perfectly for me. When I draw the second one, I'm going to let Onshape do this for me automatically the first time. You can see the icon near the mouse coming up for the tangent, which means it's made that constraint automatically. We don't want these two lines here, so we're going to learn a new tool, which is the trim tool. We're going to click on it hover over the line, it turns orange and then we know when we click it's going to delete that line. Let's do a drag test. Okay we can see that we've still got a little bit of work to do. We're going to learn another new constraint which is the symmetric constraint. For this one we're going to click the center and this acts like a mirror which means the next two objects that we click will be perfectly symmetrical either side. Let's do another drag test. Okay, we're getting much closer. Next thing I'm going to do is draw another construction line. I'm going to do it from the center of here to the center of this original construction line. The final thing to do is another midpoint constraint and we're going to do it from the base of our new line to the construction line dividing the domino in half. We should now be locked in the middle. Two dimensions and we should be done. We're going to dimension the thickness of this divider. We're going to make it quite skinny. We're also going to dimension the width. I'm going to go from arc to arc. We'll make it a little bit wider, something like 22. Everything has turned black, it's fully constrained. We've done a great job here, and the only thing I might like to do is to increase this distance ever so slightly just to get the domino circles away from the central divider. That looks much better. I'm gonna hit tick to close sketch one. Time to make our domino 3D. We're gonna do it in two parts using the extrude tool two times. 
For the first time, we need to click everything that we can see. That includes all of the little holes and dimples because we're going to do a solid as the base. And zoom out, rotate the camera, and we actually want to go away from our sketch. So we're going to click the two arrows here to pick the opposite direction. And then I'm going to put in something pretty skinny like six to see how that looks. That looks pretty good. Okay, we've lost our sketch, but there's a little trick we can do. It hides it after we've applied some 3D geometry. So we just need to click the eyeball to get it back. And now we can come to extrude again. And I'm gonna click, and this time that single click is all I need. I'm gonna keep the direction going away. And this time we're gonna do one millimeter. We can now hide our sketch again. And to finish off this domino, let's apply a quick few fillets. There we have it, our finished domino. A simple object but progress for our beginner lessons. An important note, the constraints and dimensions are there to help us, but it's up to you how many of them that you use. Stay tuned for more Onshape content. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.